Hey, and welcome to the Den Code Podcast. This is podcast number four, and we're going to get right into today's topic. Today's topic is on me and how I got to where I'm at. So today's focus is just going to be on so you guys get more familiar with my background. So as a child, I grew up playing a lot of sports. Considering this, you will now see exactly as the story goes where my ideas and philosophies come from, especially the teamwork stuff. So I grew up playing a lot of hockey and I grew up playing a lot of football. Those were my two sports. Going forward in life, I played a lot of these. It, up till 13 is when I had to um, pick. So I picked playing football and I dropped hockey. Still love it, but picked football. Anyways, so what I learned from these years in these younger years is in these two sports is the teamwork aspect and how your team and your friends that you make in those type of environments because you have similarities stick with you sometimes people think you know what they don't but i have a lot of people that i still talk to that i played either adam warriors with which is great like your grade three i believe and when you're eight years old and then from then on it was broncos rams sal so that was my football background. Hockey as well, I see a lot of people around, still visit if I can. And I find those young experiences really kind of make us who we are today. So my hockey and football is my background. I have a very good family network with my brother and sister and my parents. They So growing up in our family, my mom and dad were very caring. My mother was a very loving person and my dad, Loved you, but he didn't always say it just because that's, I think, how a lot of dads are. Um, my brother and I have a lot in common. We love football, so him and I talk a lot about that. And he was kind of my idol growing up because he went to Idaho State. He had all of those great experiences down there. But he was more than a football player to me. He was my big brother. So what the best part about having a guy like that in your life is, is he is another person similar to my dad that doesn't always say the love out loud, but you can just tell that your brother, and I think that's kind of an unspoken code really, is with your brother, you just know he loves you. And so he taught me a lot of things in life, whether football or just in, even when he didn't know what life uh, lessons. Kind of being who you are and sticking true and sticking to the loyal people. Um, Then my sister, very loving, very different than us. She has a very different background than us, just in not the sports side of things, but she's a very loving and a very, very supportive person. So if you start something new, my sister Bobby is the first person to be there for you. She will back you up, she will love, and she will support you. So a lot of people listening to this will be like, you know what? So you don't understand struggle because you've had a great sister and you've had a great, great, great brother and great parents. Well. So my family network was amazing and I think that helps me in a lot of my situations. But in other aspects of my life, I've had bad hands dealt to me. In in my football years, a lot of injuries to the head later on and things that I'm not going to get into but just didn't go my way, for instance. But you take that and now I play touch football and I take it and still love the sport and go forward with the positives in life. And you know what? You don't blame people because nothing gets done doing that. Um, from there though, my younger years, my football and hockey, I then moved on into my university years. So in high school, I played football all the way up, but then after high school, I just had too many injuries. So I went into my schooling side of things. I went to Grant McEwen straight out of high school into the bachelor of commerce program. I found that after a year, I love business and I would love to open my own business. And now I have, but it just wasn't for me. So I switched and found that educating people is what I needed. So I switched into the education side of things and I went into my Bachelor of Arts at Grant McEwen so that I could transfer into U of A. Um, Then from there, it was just a great experience because at U of A and Grant McEwen, I learned that my love for teaching people. From there though, during those years, I built some great friendships and met a lot of cool people and a lot of people from different backgrounds, which was amazing because from Sherrod Park, it's a small, slow kind of community to change for around the world because it's in Alberta. So we have most of our population is white and mostly like middle class to 
higher. So from there, I really met a lot of people in Edmonton at U of A. It was a great growing experience. And I thought that this was probably one of the best experiences of my life. And I think that it kind of molded me into who I am today. So building on that, there was a lot of life lessons in there. You know what? There were times when I sat and I went for walks on my own and I went for runs late night figuring out what am I doing with my life. Similar to the football, like sometimes when you get injured or you think you should start like I was saying earlier and you aren't and you're just wondering why, sometimes self-checks are the best and I've talked about these lots before. Um, from that though, I in university just kind of worked away and got my ed degree. So phys ed is my major and business administration is my minor. So I've worked a lot in those two things. When I graduated, everybody thought, okay, Cody Hughes is going to be a teacher. I did kind of a side thing and went into training because training is the control for me of, I can control the output that I give rather than me having to check in with a school. So education's great and I'm not bashing education, but for me, I fit this system better where I wake up in the morning and I self check and work myself and then I can kind of change exactly my plan of action kind of daily really. I wake up, get my amino acids in me or a black coffee because I fast and I get my mind right. I do either my vlogs or I do some form of self kind of medication where which honestly means yoga. <laughs> There's not, no drugs. Um, do some yoga in the morning, get my stretches in, get that liquid in. And you know what? The self-medication is the best because you actually get your mind right. And when I say self-med, I mean a little bit of alone time and getting your mind right with a little bit of stretching, a little bit of rolling, and getting some aminos in me is how I set up my day with a little bit of caffeine. Um, from there though, my feelings for my fitness got huge. So I was working at Nike at the time and I met a lot of great people there. I worked in customers. So service similar in the shoe department, we worked one-on-one -on -one with people or in groups on busy days. So from that, what ended up happening was I took all of my expertise from there and I thank Nike for that. And I moved into and took my teaching in it and moved it and started out my own company. So when I started out Fitco Conditioning, it is now three years, I started with two clients. And it was slow moving because you know what? You have to get a grapple in this industry. So I believed in myself and I had that strong family network that I talked about and I had the teamwork aspect of football. I still play touch to this day and hockey. And in high school, I did play basketball. So I played some basketball in there too. I forgot to mention that. So I had basketball from junior high into high school. So I had three great sports to go back on my teamwork. Then I was into touch football. So from there, I built on that and I really took it slow and I went with this methodology in my mind. Do I care how much I make this year? And I did it. So I figured that I want to enjoy my life and at one point in my life, I wanted to go into law, but I found my passion in training. So what I did was I had two clients. I said, by next year, I want to double at least. By next year, I had eight clients and I was grinding. So year two, we grind, grind, grind. The next year, then I had coming up, I had over 16, it was 20. So I was happy, I had over doubled. And then I was starting to get my name known and it was really great because you know what? The more you work with clients, the better you get at this job. So for me, I like that one-on-one. -on -one rather than the group. I'm not bashing it, but I think my ed program and going to U of A really taught me this. I don't think that I would be the trainer I am today without that. I think that when I worked with that and my U of A background, my mental side of things, I really like the psych classes I took and I can deal with not only my own, but giving support to people in times of need. I believe in you surround yourself with success. So my clients need that and I need that. So if you look at the training job as an idea of it's work, it is hard work, but it should be, you're getting the best hour of everybody's day. So that's the way I looked at it. And that's the why I picked this profession and I give all that I've got to it. My background though from there is now I do a lot of training in person. We are now denting away myself and my other trainer into the online side of things. So we do have an app. 
I'm not pushing that in this podcast. I'm just saying that we do have an app. It's called Trainerize. I can work with anybody in the world and it's really cool because it gives full streaming videos. If you're interested in that, you can check my website at fitcodeconditioning.ca. There is a video on there that it just explains it. But getting back to it, so what made me who I am today? A lot of life experiences and I found that struggle is where I grew the most because in my life, some people think, well, you didn't have that much struggle growing up. Yeah, but life experience is everything. So when you get a struggle, you deal with it. And you know what? I've gotten better at dealing with it because my family structure, and I'm thinking that people who are listening to this sometimes don't have that, then get your group, your small group structure very strong is my family strong, I'm strong, and you know what? The success of everybody else in your group will benefit. My friends are the same. So when I get together with them, you have fun. You talk about life. Sometimes when I sit late at night with one of my uh, oldest friends, Jesse Balabert, it's a shout out to him. We talk about things that, you know what? They just come up like that. It's not like something that's choreographed. Sometimes when you just sit one-on-one with one of your best friends, you can really change your life. And that's what I've realized. And that's how I got to where I am today is just listening to people and building structure and talking. Because if you can sit down and talk to people, it can really change your life. So my life is where it's at now. We are denting away at building one of the greatest uh, training companies in the world, I believe, just by the support systems. People text me daily. People on the online have the support. We have a group me going. We have a great social presence, but in a way that only positivity the negativity we eliminate. We've created a pride that's great. And people say, but you've set yourself up so a negativity comes. No, the world does the negativity for you. And that's what I've learned in my ed degree and other things is there's a lot of can'ts and you have to be able to teach children at that aspect. So I've just applied this to everybody. My business administration idea is behind me. So if people are interested in that type of thing, I am always opening to a life coach to help you choose your what suits you in university but for me I chose that as my minor just because I love the business side of things I loved how you buy this what's your output of it how do you make the most out of something and small spaces how do I build a gym in it basically so for me that was something that was huge and I was interested in so I took that and I believed in myself in university years there were a lot of times though touching on this now that the university years It's like, am I doing something that is right? And you know what? In those years, I really challenged. So as you know, I just told you, I switched from my business as my major, Bachelor of Commerce degree, and I switched into the ed program. So the ed program was more suited to me because I wanted the business, but I wanted that teaching too. I wanted a double, basically. I didn't just want to have a business and not have the personal side of things. I wanted, and that's where I learned. In the education, you really learn the psych of people and how people work. And I think in any business, if you can understand how people work, you can really help them more. As you've seen in my previous podcast, the mental side of things is gone. People don't deal with that anymore. They put a bell, let's talk every year or whatever it is, rather than dealing with it daily. And that's the way you deal with it is, and that's what I learned. So where I'm at now as a business owner and in the future looking to buy a gym and work in that is we do right now have to thank the old Cody that got me here. I went through grinds in university. I did a course overload my last semester with six classes. I had to be there some days from 8 till 8 p.m. So when people say, oh, but your structure was good, but my structure, but I pushed myself in other aspects. Everybody's different. And there's times that, you know what, I don't know family struggle as much as other people, but I know other struggles. So that's why the group and why I push the group so much is you guys can all learn from each other's life experiences. So surround yourself with success. But why I'm here now is that university background. So the business and ed, how I paired it. I found that the pairing really worked to my advantage now because all of that knowledge, it taught me going to U of A to always strive to be better and always learn because you know what learning is for life i learned this from my rams coach and then back then though when you're 13 you're thinking you know what it's a corny line but now when you're where you're at you think you know what they were on to something learning is for life every morning 
People always ask me, do you take morning clients? I do not take morning clients because I do all my online stuff in the morning and then I train people all evening. I train Monday to Saturday. So the reasoning for that is I like my lesson plans. That's what I call or training plans. There's my Ed coming out again is daily. So I have your overall two month plan. But if things change, I cannot write down, say for instance, you come in and see me once a week, eight workouts and expect that to work in two months. Things change. Things change. So I like and I learned that from teaching. And that's where my background really brought me to where I am today. Is it taught me that things change and you have to have your plans changing and do it daily. You will be more successful rather than setting things up down the road two months. It might make it easier to do it the two months, but you won't get the output that you want out of your clients. So pairing that, the other thing that I noticed was you remember your coaches that cared. Ram's coach, Jim Skitsko, was a great life coach. He didn't know he was a life coach, I don't think, back then, but he was. He taught you that football was great, but life and learning is forever. So you have to strive to be great. And I won two provincial championships. They're just touching on my back, like in my uh, background. And I believe that, you know what? I always said this. The ring was the thing was it? kind of the motto but I would say I would challenge that for me I can't speak for all the other um, football players that played for the Rams but I would say that the culture that they made there was the thing the ring was amazing because it was kind of the icing on the top of the cake for a championship and I think if you talk to a lot of football players that are in the NFL, CFL, they would agree. The thing they miss most when they leave and what I miss the most is the brotherhood. The Rams brotherhood and the friendships that you build, that was the best. I remember those days and just touching on my background because I want this vlog to be about in this podcast and about how I got to where I am so you understand my background. I believe that those learning experiences and friends that you built made me who I am today. I believe that some of those people really empowered me to become better. And when you can just go after school and throw a football with some guys and have fun when you're in junior high, you know what? Life is good. The Rams years were the best football years of my life. And it wasn't because we won two provincial championships because people always say, well, you won. You know what? Winning was amazing. We never lost a game. But the best thing was all those interactions with whether it was the coaching or the other players. We just loved going to practice. And it sounds weird. I never liked practice other than that. I never did. It was the most enjoyment I ever had in football. And I believe that when somebody believes in you, as all of the coaches at the Rams do when I was there, we had lots. We had Greg Johnson. We had Jim Skitsko. We had um, Mr. Souster, a great group, Ms., uh, Bruce Cunningham. We had a great surrounding coaching staff that cared. And if you had something in your life going on, they would, especially Jim, would sit down and have a good visit with you and see what's going on. We need to get your life right before I can coach you as a football player. And I found that I took that to my training. And I thank Jim and I thank Mr. Skitsko, however you want. I'm an adult now, but you're always Mr. Skitsko to me. But I believe that life is way, way too short to worry about what you did in the past. And I've touched on this before. If it's negative, you learn from it. But your positives can make you who you are today. And that's so you take your positive experiences in life and look at all the greatness that we've done. And be like, this is why I'm here. These negative things though, also why I'm here. But I learned from them. I don't want to make that mistake again. The Rams, very little negative. I have a lot great to say about them. In my football career, that was the most success, the most greatness we ever had. Moving forward, we then moved um, myself and a lot of players to Sal. Where the aspects were just very different. Not running down a program, but they were very different. I never felt the same connection. The junior program, yes, I did. The senior, I just never fit in. Some people did, but I never fit into their program the same as the Rams program. I suited Mr. Skitsko, and 
that was the truth of it. I had a lot of injuries going after just head injuries with concussions and it added up. And at the end of it, I wanted to train and work with football players and still play touch football. So that's where I went with it. Not running people down because you know what? They have a great program there too, but just for their own aspects of things, it just suited me better, the Rams. In life though, I took a lot of those things and that's what built me to where I am today. I take negative experiences too and learn. So there were times where, you know what, I could have given more. So now I give 100% when I can. And if I don't in a situation, I'm like, I could give more. Don't sell myself short. I tell that to a lot of my clients. And I think that my past is exactly that. But you still need to learn from those experiences. So in the university and my football and my sporting background is what built me. My family structure has supported me through all of this. They have given and given and given and believed in me when nobody else has. So my one teaching point that I said earlier about you, when I built my company and how it's become way more like known is don't focus on the money. Don't chase money. And this is going to be a wrap up point. This is the big thing for this podcast, how I got to where I'm at. The wrap up point is chase teaching many rather than money. When I was always set that out as that program of, I want more clients to work with rather than I want to make more money. And I found that that personal touch clients have told me they can tell that's what it's for is I want to help people and money comes and money goes, but you can't take it with you. You do need money to live. I'm not bashing it, but I'm just saying that I strived to get more clients because I found that the clients, the more I worked, the more clients I got, the better trainer I became. Because you get people of all different. You can read in textbook how to work with people of different um, injuries and stuff. But until you do it in person, it's a different story. Same as a teacher. You know what? You can say I can teach anywhere. But till you've taught there, you can't say that. Because you, life experience you cannot duplicate. So that's where if you can, if you're starting a business, if this reaches out to you, just look at getting people in and seeing them and get better yourself as well so that you can grow with them. So as your company grows, you grow rather than wanting all of this at the beginning, because you know what? It won't last. You need to work for it and you need to become better so that you can really push yourself. And then when you do that, you will feel great. So if you can look at your past, and you know what, if you need to send me at chughes at ualberta.ca a little write up about, you know what, this really reached me. Or if you want to uh, give me a text at 780-938-0650, just on what you thought of how you can change some of the things that you, if you want to touch base on things like that, like, you, oh, you took this. And I found that if you need someone to talk to, I'm always open. And you know what? You don't have to be a client to phone me or text me. I am open to talk to anybody. If you need something, you let me know. I believe that the podcast and my company is a movement. It's a revolution. We're changing the way fitness works and we're going to change this together. I get better, you get better. So if you need to talk to somebody, you let me know. Every podcast today was just kind of a background check and about how Cody got to where he is. So his football, his schooling, it built it and why he's the way he is, why the podcast come from this, and the life experience that I've had. I'm going to bring them into every podcast, but this one is kind of just the return to foundation, I'm going to call it, because it's what made me who I am today. And I'm always going to bring in a piece of my background into the podcast if I can, but this is kind of just an intro one for people so that you get my background. Have a great day, and always stay hungry, people.